Good evening. Uh, we have a very nice word from uh, Dr. G. D. Bakshi. Really, it is a very challenging to us uh, that he posed some problems, and what are the problem will be coming days? How we'll be facing facing that, and can this Saraswati can be utilized or it can be st stored in the future? This is uh, based on the satellite images. Uh, there are some, uh, I know there are old faces, there are some new faces. To say a few things, say, satellite remote sensing, as you know that recently, do you know this Chandrayaan is launched uh, recently by ISRO. That means through a rocket, it has been launched for a uh, lakhs of kilometer distance and from there, we are sensing the object. Remote sensing means through a remote, as like uh, in a TV, we are putting a remote. That means from a far distance, if you can sense a particular object, what is the quality? That is called your remote sensing. It is nothing. Now, how we sense? There are many, as you know, that uh, those are from the physics background, we have different wavelength ranges, optical data, microwave data, radar data. These are the three different ranges. That is the capability of the, within that range. We can capture the images in these different ranges, different wavelengths, and we can take that uh, one uh, just a precaution, uh, sir, uh, just you men mentioned, uh, there is a misnomer to use the satellite photography. I would say that it is not satellite photography, it is satellite imagery. Why it is so? Photography means, as you know, in the earlier, when you used to take the photograph, it is actually what has happened is a negative, and from negative, we are taking a print that is called the photograph. Satellite, what it did, it has a camera, it is a digital photograph, a dig digital data that is recorded, and it converts into a printable form. That is why always it is advisable to use satellite imagery. So, that is one precaution. This is a some correctness of this. So what is the difference between the two? Anyway, so one part is the technique is the satellite remote sensing, then from a large distance, especially that what are we are using that uh, is called remote sensing satellite. These are at an altitude of 800 to 1000 kilometer altitude from there we are sense. So, it has some camera or the sensors it has some particular field of view where we are capturing the your part of the country. The next thing is that on earth the lost Saraswati. Now, everybody believe that uh, Saraswati is lost. It may, may be lost in the past, but we have to know unearth that. Can we unearth? Is it so easy to unearth? Why is it was flowing? There are many questions that comes in mind. We have to see each and every aspect. Then and its paleo channel. One is river means you are flowing water. Any some depressions is the river. But if it is not existing in the form of flowing water, then we can say it is a paleo. Paleo means old, channel means some of these streams. That means some flowing water in the subsurface condition is the paleo channel. This is the meaning of that. That I have taken this technique. What purpose is the lost Saraswati that has to be discovered? and its paleo channels. Now, present day it is occurring in the paleo channels. Now, many things that I use uh, some uh, inquisitiveness that our curiosities comes uh, uh, in our mind. Do we find any mention in river Saraswati in ancient literatures? Let us suppose, uh, uh, first thing is that before doing that, uh, I just want to know completely unbiased way let us think. You may argue also, that is I always uh, believe that if you have some queries or any doubt, you can always pause the question. Now, Definitely, we are finding that many literatures it is uh, there. While well, this is flowing river, many people know it's still it is flowing, maybe in the subsurface condition, but it is flowing in a, in the Vedic period, it was flowing in a very large, holiest and mightiest river, but presently it is in a subsurface condition. It is very sluggishly flowing or it is, uh, uh, rate is very slow. Next is your where this river is flowing in the past, does this river have any, any Himalayan connectivity? Yes, we have established that relationship because flowing a river means you need a large quantity of water. What is the source? It can be rainwater, it can be glaciated water. That means our target is that can we link any Himalayan water or any of this source that which can fade these channels to make it magnanimous. 
that if there is any relationship between the Vedic culture and Saraswati, as uh, uh, Dr. Bakshi also mentioned in that, uh, there are a lot of civilizations, that means all these archaeological sites which you find out all along this channel, that means they have some relationship between the two. Now, what are the modern tools which can be used to explore the existence of Vedic Modern tools. I mean to say, that means we have a remote sensing techniques, hydrogeology, sedimentology, geochronology, geophysical, archaeological site. There, there should be interdisciplinary subjects that we can, together we can uh, bound to say few, say that this is the path through which water has flown and this is the course. Now, problem is that now uh, that does Saraswati is a mythical river. This is a very uh, tricky question with a mind of a youngster especially. I say it is no, but till its sanctity is stored through scientific evidences. Unless we pause the scientific evidence, nobody will going to believe. Please remember. That's why and the collecting of the scientific evidences, it not a one day job. ISRO did this job since 1995. So 20, 24 years we have been working in a piece by piece, bit by bit. We have taken the satellite images and we have uh, delineated that, proved it, is it a paleo channel or not. If it is a channel, what is the water, water availability, what is the water quality, what is the age, everything is doing in a bit by bit. And then finally, everything is integrated to form this entire course of the Saraswati River. So this is the outcome of the last 25 works, which our ISRO center, of course, uh, as you know that Professor Yaspal, he was also ISRO center in Ahmedabad. He, in 1980, he started this work, uh, but it was uh, slightly in a piece of it manner. Uh, we finally take up in a larger way, magnanimous, because our responsibility is that we have to provide the precise location, precise, precise location where they can drill. This is the very challenging. Just draw a line is not to solve the purpose. That precise location of the drilling to the local people and the community or the maybe government people, that is what that's why we are taking from a very large small scale to a large scale mapping. Now up to 50,000 scale we are did the mapping and we're taking a satellite images for different sensors. Therefore, what we say, Vedic Saraswati is not a mythical river till its sanctity is stored by the scientific evidence. Therefore, we have to go for the myth to the reality. That is our motto. Let us see, can you able to solve certain thing or you can justify those things. Now, uh, just to see this uh, already, this, as you know that Saraswati is described in Rig Veda and others. Just below that, we have a three different, uh, that means as a Saraswati, Ma Saraswati, uh, that we have made. What is the symbols that indicates? Please see in the extreme left, Ma Saraswati is sitting over the duck or swan. Extreme right is your very close to that you have a your peacock. Central part is your symbolic your both peacock and swan. What it indicates? That means just it is a, because this is a photograph you will find it in many of these uh, shops and others. It indicates that initially that was when it was a mighty river that there was an ample quantity of water. Gradually it is desiccating that means it is coming to a phase of drying and finally especially the peacocks that lives in dry areas. So this is a symbolically we can say that we can uh, construct this entire this history but this is symbolic still people will not believe okay, with the picture only you cannot picture can be made by anybody but this is a lot of meanings are there out of that. Now these are uh, given as you mentioned I will not uh, because there are many experts are available here who knows this is uh, mentioned in, uh, that Saraswati is mentioned as I want to mention that it is mentioned in 80 times in the Rig Veda than the river Ganges. You will see that. That means during that particular period, Vedic period, it was so much of magnanima. That's why it is mentioned 80 times. And it is mentioned in the Mahabharata, Manusmriti and others uh, literatures. So through ancient literature, what we get? First thing is that we get some evidence, some name is there that is we can find. Okay. Now, let us see some old maps, that means very old maps where we have a Dutch map of 1746, we have a British period map and here in all these maps the name Saraswati is written. At least we can say in that 
200 or 300 years back also in the survey of India, those maps, uh, these names are mentioned. That means I cannot say it is a myth or so. How we can I say it is a myth? Somebody might have uh, surveyed and they put a name. There are other two maps. In Italian map also it is mentioned. Mughal map also it was mentioned. That means during all these periods it was there. Now, as you mentioned, uh, that uh, uh, association of this uh, uh, river and some archaeological site, there are many sites which you can found all along this channel. That's why the magnanimity or that uh, uh, that means importance of this Saraswati river that exists that uh, during that uh, Vedic period, we have this all different cultures which are present there. But maybe tomorrow, uh, people, uh, those are expert, they will be discussing on this. And this is just uh, so a geographical connotation of all these uh, literatures. I will not come to uh, discuss much on that. This is now I will start this work with that uh, question mark, Saraswati river system. Now, can you find out the three river system? In the northwest part, we have Indus river. In the your southeastern part, we have a Ganga and Yamuna, which is shown in blue color. And in the extreme south, we have a Luni river. These three rivers are presently it is flowing only in that part where it is written Saraswati river system with a question mark that is your third desert area. Now it is challenging if it is a third desert how we can find out a flowing river or some channel paleo channels in that particular region that is our task. Now as I mentioned that what is paleo channel paleo is the old channels it has an uh, ample that means it has some aquifers it can just store water as you know that uh, how the channel forms that means any river source it carries the sediments and sediments are mostly coarse grain sand if you go to that uh, uh, close to the himalaya it will be coarser as you go down the stream it will be finer and finer so we are getting a coarse grain sand we are expecting that coarse grain sand with a that means your uh, uh, good porosity and permeability those are the aquifer that we are expecting and it should occur in a depression that means if you take a cross section of the paleo channel outside you may not get those type of sediments inside in a particular depression you will be getting those coarse sands that our interest is that can you find out those coarse sands so these paleo channels can be used it can be detected through the satellite images and here was mentioned that uh, paleo channels can be detected through optical and microwave why it is so optical means what just you are looking that means your optical region in the wavelength range we can able to detect microwave has an uh, advantage is that it can penetrate to the ground surface but it is related uh, limited to 5 meter only but still some 5 meter means some moisture content that if it can be expressed on the surface if we can be able to highlight those that is our interest to use this optical and microwave data and if it is so how can you say that on what depth or on what quantity that water uh, that means water level or water quantity can be assessed so for that purpose high resolution electrical survey that is called your high resolution tomography can be generated i will show some of these examples so i will read this survey therefore take a satellite image did the interpretations and then take all the ground informations they would do a survey and completely you can say this much quantity of water can be available in those regions and at what depth now uh, this is that uh, as i mentioned that uh, we have uh, uh, that we last uh, 25 years uh, different people have worked they have used this remote, sen uh, remote sensing work but finally in as you mentioned that you can see 2011 to 16 we have tried to compile the entire course of this Saraswati and we have this is some publications has been given now this is the work done in a different phases as i mentioned from 96 we have started only in rajasthan part then from punjab and haryana we did from 2002 to 2008 where uh, mr sachin gupta was also associated with us mr kalaramanji i have interacted with him during that uh, different seminars in kurukshetra pewa and all many places and then in 2000 10 to 14 we did and compiled an integrated map has been prepared from right from the Mount Sarovar to Dwarka. Now as I mentioned that we have a satellite data but different sensors, different sensors need their different resolution as you know the pixels, resolution means you can say in terms of pixels. Now we have a very coarse resolution, 1 kilometer as you in the right side you can say it is 1 kilometer means 1 kilometer by 1 kilometer we have one information. That means if you want to cover a very large area, we have to use the coarse uh, uh, resolution data. You can see half of India that can be covered. 
but as its requirement is more and more to precisely put a drilling sites we are using now 1 meter 2.5 to 1 meter data which is have a which is called a cadastral level map every road buildings everything can come so we have started from very coarse to very uh, uh, your uh, high resolution data sets that we have used for our study now uh, paleo channel uh, how we delineate how to that means how to map these channels so for that purpose actually paleo channels are basically as i mentioned this is your that means on the satellite image how it appears it appears as a moisture zone let us suppose there is an water and as you know many of the physics uh, due to some uh, your uh, surface tension if you put a different small pipes what will happen that means if a very small thin pipes will have a larger uh, that means your it can uh, go for a larger heights and if it is a diameter is very large it will be at a lower height that means if the sands are fine to medium or coarser it can come to the near the surface of course the actual that level it can be at a uh, maybe of uh, 10 meter or 15 meter depth but it can come to the surface we are picking up those moisture otherwise satellite cannot see below the earth surface that is many of the people see that okay satellite can go inside the surface or water that yeah it is not we are picking the soil moisture wherever it is possible we are picking that one and for that purpose there is a technique called piecewise stroke technique but these are technical things uh, that we are using but uh, not only that uh, your uh, delineation of the maps we have used this ground validation only delineation will not solve the purpose unless we prove it some different data geomorphic anomaly dealing data tubers hydrological parameters age of ground water archaeological and different published maps everything is integrated to make it that value channel map just now i have shown you that uh, in the satellite images how it looks you can see again the three rivers central part you have a slightly brighter in tone here i will say that in the satellite images how it looks in this river where the in this river is flowing there is a reddish in tone red tone means this is a vegetation that means lot of area which is vegetated but just come to the southeastern direction where it is written third desert that is brighter brighter means it is a sand covered sand is reflecting much that's why it is a brighter in tone therefore this area we can uh, uh, cannot see vegetation that means it is most of the sand cover now within that sand also if you go to the field with a naked eye you cannot able to distinguish the signatures of the paleo channels within that but only satellite images can help us to do that why it is so because it has a pic, uh, that means pixel by pixel information and it can pick up those because it's sensitive to the soil moisture and we can able to pick up that's why we have used this satellite images to i will show you now i will show this is uh, this is just a satellite image I, I did not do anything but can you see certain things uh, here this a particular things is a very darker in signature this side is a darker in signature it is goes to the Gagar river now it is only within the satellite images we can able to find out the dark signature dark signatures means it is a moisture moisture means it is expected that in the subsurface condition there will be some sorts of water so based on the signatures we are picking up these are the areas which are very dark for the whiter portion these are the actually dunes therefore we can able to distinguish the moist zone and the non moist zone here you can see there is a loop there are two uh, very dense uh, dark uh, signatures therefore satellite images you see it is uh, not i have not created it is just satellite which is taken the photographs but in a different resolution that i'm going to mention there if you take a coarse resolution take a high resolution you will get find out the, those differences so here those signatures we have collected and on our computer screen we did that mapping based on this this is that your uh, paleo channel map which have been prepared uh, in uh, 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 during 99 uh, and uh, this maps has been used by many of them this is only part of rajasthan and gujarat but later on we extended so to haryana and gujarat now this is that map that means when you after 2005 onwards we have started this work in your uh, haryana and part of punjab now here there is a very interesting is that you can see uh, these are the this color uh, uh, these are the different channels which are anastomosing 
if you can go to the Ganga River. Ganga River, uh, it, this is the width of the river, but in between you have a sand deposits. Water comes from both sides. Therefore, it is a called anastomosing rivers. So those also we can by processing we can able to pick up those uh, paleo channels. So this we did it for the Haryana and in the north, just south of the Satluj River that is called Satluj Pali Channel that also we have delineated using that your satellite images. Yeah, this is that uh, mentioned that you can see that in the north we have a blue color uh, one line that is your Satluj River which takes a uh, from north to south it is coming in the roper and suddenly it takes a turn to the west. Just below that, south of that, we have a high moist zone all along the north-south direction. This is your paleo channel that in the past possibly there was a river which was flowing from north to south and it has a connectivity with the north-south orientation. That's why we are thinking that possibly that this uh, Satluj which was earlier flowing it is coming to the south and it is joining the actually that Saraswati which has come from the Taryana uh, Kurchatra part and it is joining in near Satrana that area it is uh, confluencing. So this part in the satellite images directly it is showing that this area is a highly moist and when you uh, overlay certain uh, this all these uh, different archaeological sites it is showing a clustering of these different archaeological sites all along this channel that will show something civilization which has grown along this along with this rivers that is the uh, uh, work yeah similarly we did it for that uh, uh, paleo channels in the part of ranop kutch as you know in the ranop kutch area that the problem is that it is a salty marshy land white color things but still after processing bit by bit we can able to find out some traces of this uh, your uh, slightly different uh, that is signatures of the paleo channels based on this we have delineated that up to the gulf of kutch now based on all our uh, this rajasthan punjab haryana and gujarat we have integrated it to form a integrated paleo channel maps and i will show you what are the ground validation for that this is the map which have been i think many of them are using even uh, i think dr bakshi has used in his book so this maps i am very thankful to him that uh, he has uh, used our maps that is our great things that uh, uh, it should be judiciously used but only thing is that uh, it should be mentioned that uh, source that is uh, very much otherwise in a book uh, if you put without name uh, sometimes it may create some problems anyway now this is that integrated map and i will show you that next we have a simplified paleo channel map that is by linking that is with your monster over which is one source is from the Satluj that is coming from Mansarobar that is one source and other source is from the Yamuna which is coming to the that means your uh, Pandarpunj glacier there are two sources which are joining near Satrana and that makes a form and uh, this is the loop entire things and that we can able to travel trace up to Bed Dwarka but as I mentioned earlier Bed Dwarka that particular place what is the problem is that as you know that there was a one temple and the uh, which has been submerged that Dwarka which is the Krishna's in the Mahabharata it has been mentioned that uh, he has developed that land and he has traveled from Dwarka to Mathura via Saraswati that means through this all along the Saraswati but through satellite images because that uh, temple which is very close to Bed Dwarka it is submerged and it is entirely covered by water we cannot able to penetrate that water and say that this is the course that's why we put a dash line between the gulf of kutch and this bed dwarka it is just a speculation that's why i put a dash but rest of the things we have seen on the satellite images and in the ground also we can able to find out now what are the field evidences means we have to prove it from different angles one is your some published maps one is your geomorphic features that is called, called corn cob structures. This is also very important for a paleo channel that whatever the paleo channel we are getting that corn cob structures. Central groundwater board and groundwater department in government of Rajasthan, they uh, put a drill of 14 wells inside and outside of drilling and they found the wells which have been drilled inside the paleo channels giving a very good portable quality water at a, a slightly better quality. And, uh, uh, the uh, drill which is done outside it is in brackish water I will show you the results up be, uh, not only that uh, drilling of water this has been uh, what are the discharge and quality has been tested 
Baba Atomic Research Center, they did that uh, dating of this age of groundwater and archaeological sites also have been plotted and uh, all these ground evidences, it shows that the river or the Paleo channel is existing in those areas. This is the uh, different dots which have been shown here, these are different drilling sites, some are inside, some are outside based on using this our, uh, this satellite interpreted maps, uh, the groundwater department and central groundwater board, they did the drilling and this is the result, some of these results, so I have put us only few of them. You can see the blue color, blue color that is ellipsed, here it is showing slightly better quality water as a TDS, quality water, water means in terms of total dissolved solids, that is the parameter. If it is less than thousands, we can say it is reasonably good quality water. If it is more than uh, 2000, 1500 or 2000, we can say it is a brackish quality water. So, we can see in the top few wells it is showing which are outside of the channels, please see that these are outside which showing brackish quality water, but which are inside they are providing good quality water. This is confirmed by, this is not our work, it is done by Central Downwater Board and Downwater Department, Government of Rajasthan. And you see some of these uh, photographs, uh, that means uh, how the water is oozing, I think Dr. Bakshi mentioned that some water is oozing uh, in 2006, it happens. But water oozing is a from a Saraswati, sir, uh, you want to mention that. It is not that if you put a puncture on a Saraswati and water will come out, it is not so. For coming out of water, it needs a pressure, there needs a hydrostatic pressure, that is why the aquifer should be, that means a, if you take a tube, you fill up water and you put a bulge and puncture it at the center, then only water will come out. But if it is in a different form, it will, water will not come out. Therefore, wherever this type of configuration, this type of aquifer geometry is present, only there you will find out. But still, quality is very good, discharge is very high and there is a spontaneous coming out oozing of this water. That indicates, that means some are definitely in the subsurface conditions, some are saturated sands which provides a good quality water. And ONGC also drilled uh, some uh, wells in that and very close to that uh, your uh, 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 Indo-Pakistan border that is called Tanot, there also one tube has been drilled and it shows a very good quality water and people are using that. And this is the dating and uh, which is did by uh, Baba Atomic Research Center and most of these are average dates what they propose it is 1340 to 12400, this is a total in, entire span but average it comes around 6000. But there are some, uh, M is written means it is a metric water, it is a, some contamination from the surface water, those we are excluding. But if you say uh, that some of these say, our samples are giving a uh, that age which is very close to your during that uh, civilization. This map has been shown uh, uh, just now Dr. Bakshi or it is put in his uh, book. Uh, this map has been prepared by ISRO, actually we have not put that ISRO mark, uh, that's why uh, I think uh, it is, uh, should have been put. Anyway, but he has explained that this says a lot of things. Clustering of these settlements, clustering of these archaeological sites along this Palestine. You see, we have not first selected the channels, uh, selected that all the points we have not put and then we did the channel, no. First independently we did the mark of these channels. Later on we have collected all the, we have tabulated all these uh, data sets that we have overlaid and that gives the picture, you see. Otherwise it will be biasness, biasness means you put a point that many people researchers they also do it. You want to get a good curve, okay, first get a, this is the, I want a curve with a very good uh, uh, R square value, then what will happen? You get it and uh, generate the points and we put it, but it is not so. Faithfully we did this, all channels you mark and put the settlements, but it is clustering is coming within this two. It is as uh, Bhakti sir mentioned, you see in the Indus river, along the Indus river very few of them, it is not very clustered. But of course, the question comes, I will put uh, many of the archaeologists who is coming here. You see in the Jaisalmer area, that part, why do not have any settlements? You see, I have shown in the satellite images, it is showing a good signatures of this soil moisture that is coming just south of this Gagar, it is flowing all along this, based on this we have did the mapping, but we do not have clusters. Possibly, what I feel, what happens? 
this civilization has grown during the fluvial regime where it was flowing after that what happened that aeolian phase has come that means when the sands has covered that entire fluvial regime now it is a cover of at least 30 to 40 meter high thick sands that is called aeolian sands therefore excavation of this archaeological we don't because it is completely sand cover possibly uh, nobody has tried to explore that whether there may be some settlements but maybe in future we request that if archaeological department they can take certain initiatives certain places to find out any archaeological evidence along these channels but expecting that we should get it but reason is that that particular area it is covered by aeolian sands similarly uh, we have uh, shown in that your uh, saraswati uh, that means your haryana uh, what are the different clustering and we have uh, divided into post harappan lothan harappan mature harappan and soti harappan with a different color and many of these mature to soti harappan which are that uh, your intermediate phase they are falling very close to this channel channels are done independently plotting is done later on to uh, it is for ground validation similarly in the gujarat also we have what are the date uh, available that also we have tried to plot we found out but many of the channels recently we have delineated in run of kachi i will show you some examples okay now as uh, what about the uh, till date uh, this uh, till uh, uh, this particular point whatever i have shown this is that uh, work up to 2014 after that we have not stopped this work saraswati should flow means techniques should develop we have to new one new sensor is coming up it is launching more satellites then using those techniques can you able to find out more refined and refined paleo channels which can harness those water for that purpose optical microwave ground penetrating radar resistivity survey these are the different uh, field validation techniques everything has been used we are using it but bit by bit it is not a one day job but anyway some of these results i will show you yeah this is in the punjab part uh, just to mention that in parts of uh, ludhiana or this say uh, uh, those areas those areas it is completely vegetated area that means you have a crop area therefore we have to select a satellite image where there is no vegetation that means it is an extensive agriculture if it is a vegetation cover we may not able to find out that uh, what is below the surface therefore selectively in the month of april and may we have selected the satellite images taken the optical data taken the microwave data which is a printation capability fuse those images and we found out can you see this particular area it is showing some sorts of channel like features it has been highlighted therefore optical and microbe data that can be used together to find out many of these channels and based on this we have delineated the channels uh, just south of this satluj river which is marked with a blue line that all these channels which are which are that uh, paleo channels which are oriented mostly from northeast to southeast directions and if you say that i do not know means possibly it has been with the desiccation or uh, this uh, has been migrated uh, this river towards this western directions so that is our connotation still we are trying to resolve it why it is so but channels sir we have able to mark on 1 is to 50000 scale this is in the punjab area now this is a very interesting area that you have selected bikane uh, our uh, previous uh, megwal ji he was uh, minister of water resources uh, he has uh, given an emphasis can you find out certain things in uh, water uh, problems in those areas we have attempted what i can show uh, you can see there is a series of your from 1990 to 2015 you can see the satellite images of the same area it is south of just bikaner in 1990 we do not have any vegetation where the uh, your arrow mark is given that means vegetation means there is no crop along this direction but if, when you come to the 2015 you can see channel like features which is actually basically representation of your vegetational anomaly why vegetation element which are rubby crops rubby crops how rubby crops there is no water no rainfall what is the source this area no it is not a depression nor any canal is flowing only it is simple plain area where the vegetation has grown up along this direction lot of tubules has drawn and it happened after 1995 what happened 
that means we have indira gandhi canal that is coming from the punjab and is flowing towards the jaisalmer area that indira gandhi canal it is recharging this particular zone recharging means it is percolating that uh, water along this particular zone and it getting rejuvenated now we are getting ample water you can see that you have, if you see the field photographs you will find amp, that means uh, luxuriant vegetation all along these channels to a new channels which are uh, we able to map it using the satellite images you see only we are using a different sets of data we are deleting those channels now what is the validation if it is a paleo channel that means a sub surface channels what is the evidence means what we are expecting we should get a fluvial environment sediments that is coarse grain sediments but from the surface we cannot say from the surface it is eolian deposits but in the sub surface at some 10 meter 20 meter we should expect that for that purpose we did a resistivity survey high resolution 710 meter length across the channel we did the survey we found a paleo channel below this sand cover this is recently just 6 uh, months back we have procured this with uh, this instrument and we did the survey we found and water is available in this particular zone therefore below this sand cover of 10 to 15 meter we could able to find out that alluvium zones which are of fine to coarse grain sands so that is giving a ground proof or the field evidence that paleo channel is existing in those areas very interesting results that he got sir bsf is facing this is that area as you know that bhiga court bhiga court is that uh, indo pakistan border area and there bsf which is guarding bsf and army people they are guarding that they have to transport 70 km that means from bhuj they have to transport water to go to the up to that your uh, uh, border area about 70 km now there is a request is come from the government of uh, gujarat can you able to solve certain problems if there is a paleo channel existing in those areas yes we have tried and we have succeeded but i cannot say 100% succeeded but attempted to draw the paleo channel see yes sir this particular zone what it looks it is a bright white to a vegetated zone and that is called your in uh, there it is called bed zone bed zone means slightly elevated zone and when you draw a profile across that you are founding this area is your from the ground level there actually there are two type of uh, material which is found one is called tidal flat that means from the tides it comes it is a surface is uh, more or less flat but within that zone we are getting a white colored stable landforms which are up to 6 meter height from the ground level and all along this zone this red as i mentioned in the satellite images red means vegetation vegetation is grown along that outside inside and outside that means other sides you don't have vegetation why vegetation has grown there that particular zone and based on this we have collected all sediments trying to prove it really it is a channel or not we have delineated all these channels and this maps this is the map which has been shown here this map has been handed over to the uh, uh, government of gujarat and uh, uh, what are the different some wells have been drilled earlier that we have tried and we found their drilling data it is uh, sufficing that possibly there is a uh, your sediment character is matching but only some water quality is a problem because the sea water comes and uh, goes down but i hope that if we they, they can drill on the paleo channel possibly they will get slightly better quality water that part is still left maybe this uh, uh, year end we are planning to do and serve the for the bsf people because i know that they are serving that they are suffering for this uh, good quality water maybe at one or two places if we can able to prove it maybe uh, government of gujarat or bsf itself they can put a lot some drill on the spalio channels so that was the contention and why it is elevated that uh, uh, it has been explained that there was a actually what happened uh, normally any paleo channel means it should occur in a depression but here it is just a reverse reverse means it is uplifted uplifted means how it can be uplifted it is there was an allaband fault 
because of this fault in the south, uh, the, the, uh, below that, it has been shown that during this faulting, this particular zone has uplifted and as you know that paleo channels are the containing the coarse grained sand. It is much more stable. They can be eroded uh, much lesser than the fine grained sands or the your uh, tidal flat uh, plains. Therefore, these are the because of this tectonic activity, these are uplifted. Anyway, we have delineated those zones on uh, these zones can be harnessed by the BSF or the local people. And ISRO is has a motto that we have to serve the people only. Not only in our Rajasthan, all along the border people, we have given our maps and many of them drill. Of course, quantity, quality, it has some issues, but they are getting reasonably good quality water. That is our motto. If it is succeed, it is fine. And as you mentioned that uh, here, uh, using our this paleo channel map, Haryana Saraswati board and ONGC, they drilled uh, 10 wells in 2017-18 and they get a reasonably good quality water, good and quality I have not mentioned here only the discharge, discharge is very good within the channels. So that is the feedback that using these channels, one can use it and they can definitely, it will be helpful to them for precisely uh, selecting their uh, drilling points. Similarly, just recently, uh, Mr. Khan and Sina from IIT Kanpur, actually, uh, they have used our paleo channel map in the right side, that means it has been shown that Bhadra 2009, that used this map and did that resistivity survey across those paleo channels and they are trying to prove whether really this is from Yamuna, what we are telling that Yamuna has a connectivity with the Vedic Saraswati or not. In that paper, they have mentioned, they have proved it and this is the resistivity data. Therefore, our motto is that these maps can be utilized by academicians, many other government agencies, even local people, whoever comes, we are giving uh, to those and if it helps, us, that will be good enough for us. And this is that, I have trying to establish the chronology of this evolution of the Saraswati. Right from the 40,000 years Himalayan river originated, if you say, and 10,000 years there are mighty Himalayan rivers which are flowing and all are from the published literatures. I am trying to correlate and build up that entire sequence. Then Saraswati river which was in majestic is 6,000 to 8,000 years. Saraswati river dwindled and dried up due to river shifting. It is uh, less than 4,000 but it is around uh, 3,700 or so. Then major river diversion that takes place of Satluj and Yamuna, that is 3,500, and then desiccation around between 2,900 to 4,300, and Dwarka submerged nearly 1,500 to 3,000. So whatever the dates which was available based on uh, thermal illumination data or radiocarbon data, all these trying to cover up. Now I will show with an animation to show this evolution of this entire this Saraswati river how it is originated. Just see one by one. Next, yeah. What I'm trying to mention that 40,000 year Himalayan rivers which are originated by melting of glacier due to warming. This is that your scenario. At 6,000 years, Saraswati river was in full majestic that means the which is shown in the blue color that was that year. One side is your from that Satluj river which has a connectivity to the Mansarovar and other side is your from Bandarpunj glacier through the Yamuna which was flowing and uh, joining in the Arabian Sea. At 3,500 years, what happened? Major river diversion. You see one arrow, just I think uh, 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 Professor B.B. Lal in his lecture also he mentioned that uh, in that uh, Himalayan that particular region, there was a river diversion, just I heard in that video. This already we have mapped uh, through this uh, uh, different type of DMs and all these things, uh, how it is flowing. So there was a river diversion around 3,500 years back. Yeah, now what happened in 2009 India, this two river is bifurcated from the main uh, river which was that uh, Saraswati. Uh, it was uh, drying up, that's all with the putting with the dash lines. Yeah, and finally we are getting this particular map which is presently a course of the Saraswati which is present here. So this is the evolution, that means how it happens. It is just an animated way that we can ex able to explain that how it happens. And uh, as you know that uh, Ministry of Water Resources have been involved in the form of 2015-2018 uh, 
uh, they have uh, constituted different committees to harness this paleo channel work and, uh, and for uh, in this particular region and uh, Uma Bharti ji uh, earlier she was in the government uh, ministry of water resources and we have that means professor Valdia was also involved in that professor V N Prabhakar from archaeological survey of India uh, Mr Amarji Singh was secretary Amol Kar he is a very key person as you know this is from the Kajri Kajri is the central arid zone research institute they have started this work in 1979 1980s that he was also involved in that and uh, uh, professor Rajiv Sina from IIT Kanpur also involved and we have tried to brought out a report of this entire Saraswati work therefore Saraswati river once existed expert panel says and professor Valdia was uh, today unfortunately he is not available today but it is our compilation work which is available in the websites one can download and get that entire information in those but three reports have been brought out now in 2009 now people still have a belief that means government don't accept but I would say henceforth we should not use this the myth and myth that is era has gone now we should accept it, it is a reality 2009 in the Rajya Sabha question Professor uh, uh, by Prakash Javdekar ji, he was there, he was asked the questions and there union government admitted that scientists have discovered water channel indicating beyond doubt the existence of Vedic Saraswati. Therefore, so far from today itself, I think we should not use this word myth and myth, otherwise it will never be ended and we will be end up with that. Of, of course, scientific evidence cannot be gathered in a day or two. We have to still we have to collect some more and more data we can prove it but it is a their union water resource ministry they have also quoted the isro's work and in 2004 this paper has been published and it has been quoted there this is the major findings as i mentioned that uh, it was uh, from that uh, uh, entire this integrated map can be mapped from the mansar over to your arabian sea now related to the dating uh, it has been found that uh, Geological Survey of India, they are also doing a lot of uh, dating, collecting samples from the drilling data and they found two ages. One age is your older paleo channels, other is your younger paleo channel. Younger paleo channel at a shallower level, this comes under 8000 to 5000 years old. Whereas the older paleo channel, it is in the slightly deeper level, that comes under 28000 years old. Now the question is, do you believe? We should believe or we should not believe? Can it be goes to the 28,000? But they have also mentioned 8,000 to 5,000 year which is uh, a younger Pali channel existing at the surface. That is corroborating with your Vedic ages. But that may be some channel. You see, civilization and river growing and river evolution and all this is going on in the past also. But we may not have that much evidence, but some dating has come up at 28,000 years old. But you have to uh, consider whether it is also a part of your uh, any Saraswati river or not. But it is a, some sorts of paleo channels. Anyway, that water ages that I mentioned, it is mostly it is coming 1340 to 8910 BP, which is also corresponding. But some places, it is some old ages also come around 18,000 years. So this is the summary of our entire finding for the last 2025 work that I have presented to you. Now it is our the audience or that the spectators who has to conceive it, they have to nurture it and some of the things can be acceptable, some of them they can pause it. Uh, questions to us also, we will try to solve it. Again, we will find the new dimensions of the areas. It can be used for different sectors or it can be used, just uh, sir mentioned. Water scarcity in especially this in the desertic areas really it is very pathetic we are not getting good quality water because of the canal only we are getting some places it is good quality otherwise if you see the ground water it is not and sir I would like to mention that sir you mentioned that we can get ample quantity water and we can harness it and you can put a luxurian sir I, this is my caution paleo channels these are the storehouse with a, having some thickness having some width this much only within that area water is available if you puncture it and exploit it one day it will be lost and there will be no water in though only judiciously we have to use that water it is not that you should exhaust it in one day put it for agriculture and others this is for drinking water 
where the border area people they are facing for that purpose it is okay unless it is rejuvenated unless it is recharged through some other river as i think uh, professor kalanraman is trying to put it river linking river linking that time has come you have to link those you have to recharge those as like shown in the bikaner how a canal is recharging those areas and channel is rejuvenated similarly possibly this saraswati river course can also be rejuvenated if we put it properly recharge it through some linking of water from the himalayan water so that can it is possible to do that and this is some of the publication one can refer this is uh, that's all in our what are that uh, i have tried to give you a glimpse that how this river can be traced through the satellite images what are the ground validations and how it can be make use of that but still our work never ends we will still continue our work and whenever that the forum has come whenever there is an invitation i am ready to go and share our experiences thank you very much